Hi everyone, Ray from Pro String London with another uh, racket restringing tutorial. Uh, today, as you can see, we will be doing a badminton racket. That's a Yonex Astrox Next Age badminton racket. Uh, 22 mains by, this is a racket I haven't seen before actually, so just to be safe, let's uh, see how many crosses it has. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22 by 21. 22 mains by 21 crosses. As you can see, there's lots of, well, lots, there's enough space for the racket uh, not to be pressed or choked by the uh, mounting system. So if you're applying lots of pressure to the, to the knobs, um, do, do not tighten the racket very tight to the actual um, mounting system. Let's see, today we'll be using Yonex BG80, multi filament strings, <coughs> zero to 68 millimeters. So, make sure you mount the machine, uh, the racket on the machine, obviously finding your middle. If you, don't, if you don't mount the racket on the machine correctly, you may encounter some serious problems. 13 and a bit, 13 and a half, 13 and a quarter, full lengths of the racket. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, and a little. I know that this is gonna reach more than enough. Um, just my way of um, measuring. There are other ways of measuring strings. That's not not that, I mean, of course it's important, but it's not that important the way you measure, as long as you measure uh, accordingly to each racket you do. So, badminton's always start from the bottom. As you see, I've just pulled the string through the first uh, hole towards the middle. They tend to be a different color grommet. Uh, a lot of times it's a clear, clear grommet on the, on the Yonex racket at least. Not always. 22 mains, therefore we have one main already in, 11 to each side, we've got one in, like I say, 11 minus one is 10, so I'm going to count 10 more main strings. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Uh, I haven't shown this racket before, but it's, uh, I can see already it's gonna be pretty straightforward frame uh, to deal with. No, shouldn't be any surprises anywhere. <coughs> We're going to do a two-piece uh, stringing. In other words, just, uh, sorry, two-piece. One piece and two knots. That would have been four knots. Two pieces is four knots. The player or client has requested 26 pounds of tension. Lift up your first uh, clamp to make sure that clamp is nicely in line with the racket or the string. I, I've just come off a tennis racket, so I need to make sure my clamps are at appropriate. Um, appropriate hold, let's say, on the string, not too tight, not too soft. There's a small gap here, you may not see it. These are tension, tension spreaders, guys. Very important little piece of uh, plastic. Very important tool for us badminton stringers. Um, as the name of, uh, of it in itself, tension spreaders. Uh, help spread the tension on the uh, first few uh, strings, at least, and throughout the whole racket, of course, but uh, especially at the beginning where there, you, there's, there's a lot of tension being applied into a uh, very small space. Um, so that really helps. It really helps. Uh, I would say more than helps, it's a, it's a must, I have to say, because if you're just playing around or just stringing with, uh, with uh, a badminton fixture, or sorry, tennis or squash uh, fixtures, there's a lot of tension going on to just two, two small points. And because badminton rackets are, and remember this, guys, very fragile, very fragile. Uh, so there's something you want to look out for. Be very careful. Check my camera. Uh, I was trying to make a video a couple of days ago or yesterday, I think it was, uh, and it turns out it switched off after about five seconds and I was rambling on, not even for the video, but to myself. Anyway, we're all good. 
three mains to each side. Very important to compensate each side. Never more than three in theory. Three, 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 and so on, and so on, and so on. All the way to you finish all your mains. So as you can see, I've now uh, finished three to each side. Just checking my clock. All right, half past. <clears throat> And number six. I'm not stringing any quicker than normal, just FYI for information. In case you think, oh, he's trying to show off. No, I'm just stringing at my own normal kind of pace. If anything, I'm going five, ten percent slower uh, for the video, for video purposes. But at the same time, I don't want to go too slow either because I do have about at least 15 rackets set here at the moment waiting for a uh, Waiting for stringing. Has anyone uh, ever strung this racket before? It's the first time I've been around badminton now, uh, badminton stringing scene for about seven years. Astrox Next Age. Interesting. Very interesting. Next Age. Hmm. I mean, there's so many different models out there, but. This one being a little bit less popular, I guess. It seems like a good frame. It might just be quite old, and I'm not aware. I'm not a, I'm not a badminton player, really. Um, tennis player, tennis coach. So, yeah. I'm not familiar. I'm familiar with the most popular ones over the last few years. But anything over uh, five, six years old, I'm not that knowledgeable about. But not to say that, you know, stringing it. It's a completely different story. You can still be a good stringer uh, and not know every single model out there. You could be a very poor stringer and not and know all the models. So different ways of looking at things. Right, this is our eighth main. One more to go. I'm going to use a little string aid to give myself some nice space here because this next uh, sorry this next main string is going to cover the last second last cross. So you've got the last cross here, and then the second one there, second last, uh, and that's gonna, that's gonna go over that string. Bear with me guys, I have a, uh, someone at the door it would seem. Bear with me. Someone's ringing my doorbell. Good, sorry for that guys. It's just the uh, the cleaner. <laughs> we get cleaner once a week to help us out, seeing that we don't have any uh I mean of course you can find time to clean. However, we've got lots going on with three small kids. Um so it just helps us out as well. We don't have any Childcare, I mean, they're at school and nursery. However, getting things done with three kids is not always easy when you don't have any help or family. But anyway, some of you may relate. Um, yeah, I'm actually uh, juggling work, as you can see. And three small kids under the age of eight. I have three kids, eight-year-old, four-year-old, and a almost 20 month old. So coming up to two in July. <clears throat> oh wow, okay. Very interesting. So this stringing pattern, we have 
the bottom and the top uh, it might be similar one two three four five six seven skip one one two three four five six seven eight so the top is the, different from the bottom one two three four five six seven skip one eight skip one nine skip one ten skip one eleven and the bottom is one two three four five six seven eight nine skip one no sorry three four five six seven eight skip one nine skip one ten skip one eleven interesting normally i don't need stringing eights at the bottom but it's quite clear i need them on the bottom of this rack it's the first time ever i've used a stringing aid which i think isn't really even going to do much in all honesty maybe it's better if i put it it'll help me out more if i put it on the other side of the hole let's see oh no nah anyway i don't think, don't think that one's really gonna help me at all anyway if it helps me it helps me so what the stringing aid does opens up the gap a little bit or helps pass the string through because lots of uh, covered holes, covered uh, cross strings. I've upped my tension on the last main where I'm about, this is my short side. Short side is the side that you're gonna tie your knot to. Um, and that is this side, which I'm going to now, tie. I'm going to make my knot, but I'm not going to pull my knot. And I'll show you why, uh, hopefully you can kind of see. So you can see lots of holes being covered here by one main and my knot string. So if I pull this, not my knot string, it's only gonna deny access to these holes here that I need to access, about three of them. So therefore, I'm going to do three crosses. Well, in a mo oh, I think I just pulled on my cable with the string accidentally. Okay, string, the machine's just resetting itself, unfortunately. Not the best timing, but hey, things happen. In the meanwhile, I will try, as you can see, it's a good moment to show you guys the hydro hydraulics. So this machine moves up and down as you're seeing. It's very low. It's probably at a kid's height, junior height. Never thought about it that way. That's the original position. And as you can see, it's not only lifting, it's also turning the angle head. So we've got the hydraulics part up and down and then the actual top piece in itself lifts up on an angle. Right, second last main. <coughs> oh, I got my, my little stringing aid. For me, they're very important. Even if I don't really need them anymore, but it's become a habit because they have been so useful to me in the past. And I'm just using a piece of uh, tennis string, guys, just a piece of polyester. Uh, I don't know if it's 125 or 130, I don't know. They work well for me and I will continue to use them. Um, okay, doke. Here's our last main on our. I guess you could call it long side. If the other side is short, why not call this one long? I don't think they actually do, but let's call it long for now. So, our first cross. So here you go, I've got all sorts of uh, covering of my cross. This, let's see how easy, oh, that was easy enough. Wow, okay, so it looked like it was very covered, but uh, I guess not all that covered. Sometimes it can be deceiving, it looks like it's completely covered. And that's why I use my, uh, my uh, little string aids, let's say. That's gone through nicely as well, despite being covered by two different strings and I'm going to cross over I'm going to do one more cross I don't know if you guys have already noticed but when I'm pulling my cross string across the racket or the mains I'm be being as nice as possible to my strings so you see my hand is not stopping right but anyway now I can tie my knot now I'm gonna tie my knot. Don't pull too hard because it's on the, your anchor string, which is your main string, which you, is a necess necessity because if not, it'll be very hard to tie your knot. 
you need to tie it onto an anchor string. But saying that, if you're doing four knots on a badminton racket, it's a it's good practice not to tie your third knot, so the knot that starts off the crosses, your starting knot on the crosses. It's best to tie your knot outside of the uh, anchor string. So do not tie it around a main string, just tie a knot outside. Um, you may have seen an other tutorial. I believe it's roaming around somewhere on there where I do a four knot stringing job. So, my bad, five pounds extra on your cross strings. So, Alea, uh, Alexa, <laughs> Yonex uh, recommends upping the tension on their rackets. They have an isometric um, system shape of the rackets slightly squared off at the top if you'd like uh, so up the tension on your crosses 0 0.5 pounds i did it a little bit late apologize for that <clears throat> but better late than never so it's probably 0 0.2 kg if you're shooting in, in uh in kilos so we're going from 26 to 26.5 guys As you can see, I'm stringing one ahead, as always, makes my weave much easier on the second string. So if I just were to just tie this or pull this string now and then weave, my weave would be a little bit trickier. Um, may not have a massive impact on if you have a good amount of experience, um, but I just do it out of habit now. I have not tried to just string without stringing one ahead for a very, very, very long time. Um, so I won't go back to that or I may have never actually strung that way. Maybe when I was a kid, I started stringing at the age of 12. Um, so maybe that once upon a time I did start that way, but I soon discovered that there was better ways and easier to save you time which is always a bonus. Something not right here. I've made a boo-boo. Yeah, there it is. I went over, over. There you go, guys. Check your work. Should be quite noticeable, especially when you go on to weave the next string as I just did. Uh, it didn't look right. And sometimes it might just be one small wrong weave. A double over or a double under and uh, you might not catch it because it won't change too much the, um, the way it looks at least or feels when it comes to stringing but yeah it is it is noticeable if you have good experience you should catch it pretty quick as I did um, I've got my head in about 45 different things right now as well not an excuse um, but yeah my head is not just in this video right now I have a meeting at 11.30 that I want to make sure I'm on time to. It is uh, now, what time is it? 10.47 a.m. UK London time. <clears throat> yep, it's cloudy outside again. Ugh. Anyway. String 
adjust the, the tension head can happen from time to time. Such a thin string. Can happen with any string really, tennis squash. Um, rules from Bayardo. I have to make sure that string catches nicely in the tension head. see the sun much here to be honest which for somebody who grew up in, uh, in Marbella, Spain from the age of 12 born in Canada, Toronto it's, uh, it's a little bit depressing a little bit okay I lied it's very depressing <clears throat> but I guess it is what it is and it slipped again loads of string left over actually which is okay okay we've got a shared hole here guys cut yourself a nice sharp end mine looks hmm Let's see, did the job sharp enough, I guess. <clears throat> Obviously another shared hole on the other side. It seems like quite a spacious grommet, no issues. As you can see, sometimes it can be very tricky. First thing I always recommend is cut yourself a nice sharp edge or end of the string and when I, I mean this part here uh, let's see another covered string by our lovely mains okay I'm through anyway no real drama so far pretty simple racket to string as you can see uh, at least in the bottom does it have it has one shared hole on the bottom part of the racket might be the same case at the top. Uh, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So just the last eleventh main string shares a hole with a cross. As you can see, I just used my all, but I just lift a tiny bit of a lift to move my string, my main string out of the way so I can weave my cross through. <clears throat> Try not to use the all. If you do, be very careful. second third last cross string from the top also always remember you should always 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 regardless if you use two knots four knots one piece two piece string your badminton crosses always top uh, bottom to top bottom to top always it's not like tennis or squash where it can vary sorry the squash can vary tennis is always top to bottom you string your crosses in tennis top to bottom so I've got the stringing aid here as I thought before it's not doing anything for me which is the first time I see that because normally string aids do a very good job of helping out a little bit giving yourself some space so you can get through the uh, main string and go across but in this case maybe I'm being a bit lazy and not cu cutting myself a nice sharp edge as well but yeah I mean this just not doing anything really these aids at the top stringing aids well there you go i lie so i struggled to put through one 
through the first one. The second one just came through nicely. But that could be just down to probably almost certain cutting myself a nice sharp edge. So you just saw how important that is. And my last cross, weave cross. Up the tension, 15 to 20% as recommended. Oh, tension had decided that it didn't want to hold on. There you go. All right, guys, I've got loads of string left, maybe too much for my own liking, but hey, better to have a bit more than less in these kind of uh, situations. Found my anchor string. Lots of space to get through. The same grommet as one of the mains. Oops. Okay. Okay, don't pull that knot, that knot too tight. All right, that was a Parnell knot, FYI. Tie one small single knot and then you go through with the second one through that first knot you've done for the stringing aids are coming out very easily. This racket probably didn't need them, but good practice and a habit of mine at least. I always using them. Straighten up your strings. If you're having if you're struggling struggling to take your racket off the machine or your mounting uh, system. That's because you've tightened the racket far too hard on the frame in itself. On the on the machine in itself, sorry. As I always say with badminton's music to my ears. When it sounds, when I get that sound, it is a, it's a special one. Uh, typically in badminton, you don't get that high-pitched ping uh, from tennis or squash. All right, guys. Thanks a million for uh, tuning in. Hopefully there was some uh, useful knowledge there for you guys. Please comment in the box if uh, anything you want us to show you next time um, or anything we can improve or I can improve in this case. Um, thanks again, guys. Happy stringing and see you soon. Bye-bye.